Okay, here's another question. Uh, reader wrote in, wondering if a Christian can be demon-possessed. Joanna. Look at me, Joanna. No. Not under any circumstances ever in any way can a Christian be devil-possessed. Never, never, never. Now, I say that as one who's cast out about 40 or 50 devils in my time. And I don't mean this charismatic pretend stuff. I'm talking about people, people that were speaking uh, in other languages, uh, froming at the mouth, acting like a cat, prophesying, uh, uh, levitating things. I mean, I'm talking about real devil possession like you read in the Bible, not casting out a spirit of depression out of a woman, but I mean real devil possession. So I, I say that as somebody that's had experiences with that. And then I, above all things, I have a Bible. So let's see what the Bible says. 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits where they be of God, because many false prophets have gone out in the world. Hereby know we the Spirit of God. Every spirit, that's like a, an evil spirit or a good spirit, either one, that confesses that Jesus has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus come in the flesh is not of God. This is the spirit of Antichrist. Now, when he said spirit, he's not talking about people. There are people who confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh and preach it and write a book on it and still be devil-possessed. There are many unsaved, devil-possessed preachers. So he's not talking about individuals. He's talking about the spirit itself. Now, I have been dealing with people who were under the power of spirits or a spirit. And you can say, you can say to them, is Jesus Christ Lord? And they, they will not say yes. And it, it may be somebody that was a, an active member in the Christian church. Somebody's been sitting in your congregation, in some cases, for two or three years saying amen, but never been saved. So here they are, devil possessed. Did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? They will not say that he did. The spirit itself speaking through the individual will not acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord God and he died. Uh, I could tell you some funny stories about the devil and some of the things he said, but we'll, we'll, we've saved that for another time. Um, he said, you are God, little children, and have overcome them, these spirits, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So there's only one he in us, and that's the Holy Spirit of God. And that Spirit of God that's in us is greater than all the spirits that are in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world. The world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the Spirit of truth and the Spirit of error. So one of the things the devil comes with, the spirits come with, are lies. In fact, that's his main weapon, or lies. God's main weapon is truth and uh, the, the sword of truth. But the devil's main weapon are lies. In fact, his first weapon was a lie. He said to Eve, Has God said you shall not eat every tree of the garden? God knows in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. He lied to her. He deceived her. And uh, so the devil's first tool is lying. 1 John 3, 8 and 10 says... He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Can you imagine God redeeming a lost soul, putting his spirit in that individual, his name's written in heaven, and then a devil comes into him and he's devil-possessed? And he commits all kinds of vile acts and says vile things and curses God and Jesus Christ and he's devil-possessed. I mean, that's an absurdity. We'd have to find another salvation. We'd have to look somewhere else. <laughs> that one wouldn't work. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. You see, that seed that remains in us is not going to allow Satan to come and dwell in. In this, the children of God are manifest and the children of the devil. So what's happened is, and I've read books where prominent preachers have said that Christians can be devil-possessed. And the reason they say that is because they have run across people in their congregation professing Christians who were devil-possessed. And they've cast the devil out of them and the people went on. 
You know, I had a guy one time, a uh, member of my church. He was a high school senior, 18 years old, football player, sitting right beside me in a meeting. And the first song, first words of the meeting was a song, and uh, Shad Williams was singing, and the first word was Jesus. And that's common with Shad. And so he, begin, he begins to sing and got one phrase out. Guy sitting right beside me because he's kind of helping us around with our sound equipment and stuff. And this guy stiffens out like a board, puts his hands over his ears, and screams, Don't say that name. And it's a metal chair, so he slides like this, bump, 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 and lands in the floor flat this way, about 230 pounds. Plunk. Holding his ear, saying, Don't say that name. Well, <laughs> he's not of God. <laughs> He didn't want to hear the name of Jesus. The devils didn't, any. So I got him up and to take him to a prayer room in the back, and he starts, uh, he's stumbling. He just can't hardly walk. The devil's possessing his body. And uh, a couple of military guys got up thinking I was escorting a drunk out, and they were going to help me. He laid both of them out. He was real agile and alert when those guys came around. So he knocked both of them down, and then we got to the prayer room, and uh, he named the, the devils spoke to me, and they gave their names, different ones. And he, the devils told me how they possessed him. It was he was listening to rock music, particularly the music Black Sabbath. And listening to that, he got devil possessed. And he continued to listen to it. I heard one of my grandkids listening to a song the other day that was equal to it. And so that is one of the ways that the devil comes into people is through devil's music and so <laughs> that guy ended up the devils came out went right back in he didn't want them out so he went home and the next day his daddy made him come to my house to apologize for wrecking the place and uh he walked in he said in real meek said mike i don't know what happened to me he said i don't understand i don't remember i don't know what happened to me and uh i said sit down there he sat down and I shoved the Bible, it was like a table, I shoved the Bible towards him. And he starts screaming, puts his, starts climbing backwards, gets up on the couch, puts his back against the wall and said, get that book away from me, get that book, get that book away from me. I don't want that book, get that book away from me. And I recorded, I, had, I turned my tape recorder on just before he came in. And I had just spent two hours with a couple helpers the night before casting the devil out and they coming back in. It was clear he didn't want them out, so I said, go on. He left. About five years later, he comes back to my house. And he's grown up then, married, had some kids. And he's got a, a 45 on his side. <laughs> kind of freaked me out. I didn't have anything on my side. And, uh, but he was real friendly. He said, I'm, I'm state trooper up in Ohio and uh, got married and got a couple kids. Just want to come say hello. And I said, what are you doing? And he said, oh, I teach Sunday school and church. So he was a Baptist Sunday school teacher, devil possessed, probably still is today, may have high claim. If the devils act up in him and the preacher casts them out, he'll say, see, Christians can be devil possessed. No, they can't. Only people that belong to the devil can be devil possessed. Ephesians 2, 20, 2, 2 and 7 says, And it came to pass, you walk, according to the, you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power air used to in times past, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. 1 John 2, 14. He said, I write unto you, little children, because you've overcome the wicked one. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. What agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I'll dwell in them, I'll walk in them, I'll be their God, and they shall be my people. How in the world could God and the devil dwell in the same place? <laughs> you know, the Holy Spirit would certainly cast out a devil if he was in, <laughs> in the same body. They couldn't get along. Luke 10, 17. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us. You see, I have never been the least little bit scared of devils. I, I'm not scared of the devils or the devil. Now, if I gave place to the devil, he could, he could destroy my life. But you give place to him by cultivating the ground where he dwells, fertilizing the ground where he dwells with the things that he delights in. 
In other words, if you get into pornography or some kind of other garbage or you start lusting after children or man after man or you get into thieving and lying or whatever you get into and you create an environment, then the devil could uh, come in because you're making a place for him in your life. And he said, The seven returned with joy, saying, The devils are subject to us through thy name. He said, Behold, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, these disciples who weren't yet filled with the Holy Spirit, weren't yet born again, were casting out devils and having a good time doing it. <laughs> they were laughing about it. They were rejoicing. The devils are subject to, wow, we just got there and we say to this guy that's foaming at the mouth, Satan, I command you to come out of him in the name of Jesus. In the name of who? Jesus. Whoop, out he comes. Now, that's the fact, Jack. <laughs> that's all that one.